This is Omloi Noir, I'm Michael and you're watching an episode on how to draw a Chacon from the Lamento bass slash descending tetrachord. There are some Chacon basses that occur more often than others, as those are based on dance classics from the late Renaissance, that became downright evergreens such as the Fulia d'Espagne, the Immortal Romanesca and the Lamento, also known as Descending Tetrachord. The type of Chacon bass that I feature in this video definitely is among the most popular and I chose it for several reasons. Being one of the shortest and simplest Chacon basses makes it especially attainable for less experienced improvisers as excellent playground for all kinds of figurative tryouts. The descending tetrachord is actually some sort of master device that offers a deep dive into several contrapuntal principles such as guidelines, all kinds of dissonances, voice exchange procedures and scaffolding transformations. So I guess this video is gonna reveal a huge trick box of super sweet musical ideas that are really big fun to play around with. The tutorial is divided into different levels of nerdistry as the lamento can as well be seen as an iceberg with the more obvious elements around the surface area that that you would probably see in most mainstream-ish tutorials on the matter and rather intricate and specific stuff that can be discussed the deeper you dive into the topic until you hit the dolphin deep down in the abyss, an area that may be a bit exotic for some. The most elementary counterpoint consists of a line of parallel thirds, which as you will see makes a crucial guideline. If you stack another third voice above it, you obtain a chord progression that's exclusively based on consonant triads. I claim that already from this elementary, purely consonant scaffolding, you can draw a bunch of musical ideas when you connect those elements by broken chords and scales. So I'm gonna give a little demonstration in form of a short set of six basic variations drawn from the scaffolding, but I'm doing this with a certain pedagogical purpose that's intending to show the importance of the third. <laughs> notice that I kind of diminished the note values successively and you probably know this basic procedure characterizes variation sets in general. It's obvious that this process has physical and of course aesthetical limitations and cannot just go on forever. An established solution to that problem can be studied in a lot of instrumental chacons. The process of ongoing diminishment towards smaller note values is being repeated several times. Once a certain peak is reached, the process begins again from bigger note values. So the overall abstract formal concept can be depicted as wave-like development of reiterated increase of intensity and sudden back from which this process can begin afresh. This strategy can be studied in thorough detail in the famous F minor Chacon by Pachelbel or this Passacaglia by Heinrich Ignaz Franz Bieber. The commonly applied standard dissonances on the Chacon bass usually are 7-6 suspensions. 
As we have two weak beats in triple meter, you have two possibilities to prepare and to resolve the dissonances. This example is as well designed to show that there is an ambiguity in the endings. Any last chord of a cycle can either be realized as a half cadence that closes a 4 bar segment or can as well be realized as a cadential link to the following cycle. Now let's consider the 7-6 suspension as an additional voice that goes along with that guideline of parallel thirds that I've shown in the first place. This means that the suspension chain can either be above or below that line that draws the thirds to the base. An excellent exercise is just to play around with these options in terms of changing the positions in each cycle. From the teaching experience that I gathered so far, I can say that for many students it is a pretty demanding task to do this on the spot. I have a question for you. So, do you have to be a genius to improvise? Yes. <laughs> If you are able to juggle around with the sevenths like this, it's time to add some diminutions that I'm now drawing from the dissonance scaffolding. So here's eight basic examples on how to embellish it. And just saying, I marked every seventh so you can follow. <laughs> For the sake of variety, it is common to transform that baseline a little bit. The two most common variants drawn from the descending tetrachord are the circle of fifths or another zigzag pattern that's sometimes referred to as cascade. And in both of them the descending tetrachord is still well recognizable. As I showed you in another video, that circle of fifths pattern can be seen as an alternative base to the 7-6 chain. And actually most upper voice diminutions that can be drawn from the 7-6 chain can as well be put above that C5 pattern. Quick example. is a slightly more substantial modification. The simplest option is to put sixth chords on those that approach the notes of the original scaffolding by step, but it's as well possible to apply six five chords. <laughs> I guess it's now time to introduce the ninth as well. So now basically every chord of that progression can be embellished with dissonances. Well, you just need to find something to fill the void that's left in your life. The 
ninth can as well already be put on the first chord on any cycle, as long as it's been prepared by the preceding bar. Example in three cycles. <laughs> This kind of overlapping connection of two cycles can as well be done with other dissonances. Here's one example that pulls the 7-6 chain over two cycles and then prepares a fourth for the subsequent one. <laughs> You probably noticed that we're now kinda entering the nerdy area for the dolphins among you. I admit that this very last sequence looks a bit odd, as there is no thirds in the seventh chords and that latent parallel fifths on the downbeats, but contrapuntally it makes total sense. As all dissonances are prepared and resolved by step, I'd say it's profoundly legal. The sheer sound of it is actually quite nice. Here's another example of it. I know it sounds kind of corny, but I got a soft spot for this kind of stuff. As we're obviously on the more speculative side now, how about this one? Apart from the double suspensions, I integrated the fifth, which converts these situations into complete chords of the ninth. Sounds like this. <laughs> If you ask me, I'd say the sound world is inspired by French clavecin music and especially the last examples I've shown you definitely sound best on a real harpsichord, but I just can't afford one at the moment. Unless you finally start to support me on Patreon. There is already a little bunch of very nice and generous people doing so and it shouldn't be for nothing, as I just started to feed my site gradually with PDF bundles that go along with my videos plus a bunch of instructional practice materials I usually use for my teaching and of course you will find a proper sheet with everything you've seen in this video and if you made it till here you know that's already a big package. If you experimented a little around within the playground that I outlined in the last 10 minutes, if you gained a certain haptical control over the dissonances and melodic space of the Lamento and you're able to connect a bunch of cycles without crashing, you're already in an advanced state that I call jamming. Well, jamming is still not making a chacon of course, it just kinda resembles it. It may be a lot of fun for yourself, but for an external listener, this probably won't be just as enjoyable. I know from my own experience that jamming quickly turns into dull tootling, so making up a real convincing chacon on the spot is a high art. And that's why we're gonna take a closer look at an improvised chacon by an early music professional that I'm gonna examine a little bit in my next video. End of story. Thanks for watching the video to the very end. I especially want to thank my Patreons. I'm sincerely happy about your support and I feel flattered that you value this kind of work, which is of course a big motivation for me. Thanks a lot and see you next time.